Commodity TV, live from the Mines and Money in London, day number two, and our first interview guest is yeah somebody I would say out of the yeah energy metal space I would call it, Nigel Robinson, the CEO of Central Asia Metals. Yes, good how morning, Tim. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. How's the conference so far? Good so far. Busy day yesterday. Uh, it seemed a bit busier than last year, I have to say. Lots of people attending our booth. We've got a booth here, um, you know, from different angles, from investment angles, from actual BD opportunities and just networking on, on mining products, basically. So good afternoon, actually. Good here. Great. Um, so you are operating two um, mines, one in Kazakhstan yeah. and one in North Macedonia. Could you just give us an insight in the mines, the projects and in your company? Yeah, a quick overview. We listed on the London Stock Exchange, uh, the AIM uh, part of the London Stock Exchange in 2010. And we raised $60 million at the time to build what's known as an SXEW facility, that's solvent extraction, electro-winning copper cathode facility in Kazakhstan. More or less in the center of Kazakhstan, just north of Lake Balkash. Uh, it's an in-situ dump leach project, so we don't move any of the ore, so it's very low cost operation. Yeah. And then we put it through this SXEW plant, which is used the world over for around about 30%, I think, of, of the world's copper production. We only produce small amounts, around about 14,000 tons per annum. Okay. Um, and the world's output of copper, as you probably know, is closer to 20, 22 million tons. So a very small operator, but very low cost and profitable. We built the plant on time back in 2012. And this year we celebrated our 10 year anniversary of production at Coonrad. And so to date we've produced around about 134,000 tons of copper, pure cathode copper at very low cost. Our average over that 10 year period has been 54 cents per pound, which is around about in dollars per ton. And the mining industry is bad for this, isn't it, Tim? Wow. <laughs> in terms of different metrics, yeah. etc., It's about $1,100 per ton of C1 cash cost. And okay. copper, as we know, is selling around today $8,000 per ton. So a highly profitable operation, around about a 79% EBITDA margin out of that operation. On the back of the success there in 2017, at the back end of 2017, we spent $402.5 million to acquire an underground wow. lead and zinc mine in North Macedonia. Uh, this is more traditional mining, uh, where you uh, drill and blast and take the ore to the surface and put it through a flotation plant to create lead and zinc in concentrate. And annually, we produce around the quantum of 20 to 22,000 tons of zinc in concentrate and about 27 to 29,000 tons of lead in concentrate, which we send to smelters for onward sale into uh, into the commodity markets. So what's the resource base at these two mines and what's mine life? Yeah, mine life both. In Kazakhstan, Kunrat has a mine life out to 2034. Um, and at Sasso, it's a mine life out to 2037. At those kind of levels of production that we just talked about. Okay. So you're paying dividend, which I would love <laughs> as an investor. That's great to hear. Um, mm -hmm. Since when do you pay a dividend and what's the history of the uh, dividends? Yeah, the dividend's an interesting one. When we first set out at Coonrad um, and came into production, as I said before, in April 2012, in the first eight months of the remaining of that year, we were, we were generating good cash flows. Metal prices were fairly good, low cost operation. Uh, and we decided to institute a, a dividend policy. And at the time it was based on a percentage of the revenue at Coonrad. And then obviously when we acquired Sasa, we had to mature a little bit from that into a free cash flow basis. Yeah. So we have now been paying dividends since 2012. Uh, our current dividend policy is that we pay back to shareholders a range between 30% to 50% of the free cash flow oh, wow. that is generated from those wow. two operations. And in the first half of this year, that was $52 million of free cash flow. So we paid back for the interim dividend this year, a 10 pence dividend, which equated to 40% of that free cash flow number. Okay. So I think you already mentioned that you have a, a high EBITDA or high margin. Mm. So can you tell us something about this? Yeah, we, 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 we like to operate in the lower end of the cost curve. Um, we haven't got any debt on the books because we paid the debt off from what we used to acquire SASA. So it makes, makes it uh, easy to sleep at night, should we say, Tim, in many ways. And we, we generate, you know, as, as I said before, Kunrad is a low cost operation because it's in situ leaching. So we don't have any of the expense of moving the ore onto a pad and agglomerating it, et cetera. So we're fortunate at Kunrad in that we do have low cost operations. Uh, and at Sasa, what attracted us to Sasa was again, low cost operations. As a consequence, we operate in the lower end of the cost curve and therefore we produce higher EBITDA margins. At a group level, that's around about the 60% level. Okay. So no debt uh, no left debt now. No debt left. No debt left. What's what's cash in the bank? Cash in the bank is around about the 55-60 million dollar mark. Um, we've fully repaid the debt, which was 187 million dollars that we took on to acquire Sasa, 
uh, we've fully repaid that back in August of this year. So the treasury balance is building up and our intention is to use that money in three ways effectively. One is to continue the dividends back to shareholders because I think it's been very well received. Uh, if we take on an acquisition, it will be to pay back debt on that acquisition because we will use debt funding to finance it probably. And also to grow the business at Sasa. We're doing a, a, a project at the moment at Sasa which is to transition the mining method from what is currently a sub-level caving method to cut and fill method, which has got a lot of benefits in terms of improved safety. It will uh, increase the life of the mine effectively because it will allow us to go lower with the geotechnical stresses in the mine body. And also there's a very important factor, which is the environmentally friendly management of the waste that comes out of the mine, which will then be done through dry stack tailings and putting almost half of that waste back into the void through paste. So also in uh, green energy, because you built a, a solar power yeah, plant, yeah. can you comment a little bit on this? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've worked hard over the last three years at our kind of ESG credentials, and we've put out three sustainability reports now. In Macedonia, we've acquired 100% renewable energy from our electricity supplier. We have a, a, a certification process that confirms that that is 100% renewable. So in Kazakhstan, which as many people will know, is primarily a country that's based on coal-fired power, effectively, and we take our power from the, the grid, the cost of that power we benefit from because it is very low cost. But in order to show our green credentials and show some kind of willing towards a transformation in, in Kazakhstan, we thought we'd build a solar farm. I think on commercial terms, it's probably about break even because you're comparing cost of solar power, which is actually quite cheap these days, with the cost of what at the moment in Kazakhstan is very low uh, power costs really. So it wasn't driven by a commercial requirement to save costs more driven by our ESG credentials and that power plant is quite small by international standards it's going to cost about five million dollars for a five megawatt plant and will supply about 16 to 18 percent of our electrical requirements at the Kunrad SXEW facility and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by about 10 percent in Kazakhstan. How does the shareholder structure look like? So what is management holding? Do we have institutional investors? Or we have a lot of institutional investors who've been with us since we first floated back in 2010. There's been churn a little bit along the way, but probably around about 65 to 70% of our shareholder base is names that people will know in the London market. People like BlackRock and Fidelity and Polar okay. Capital, Majadi Asset Management, people like this that have invested and been in and out of the company, but have been long-term followers. Joe Hambro, for example, um, of the company. Some came in at the SASA acquisition. Some have been there since day one when we listed in 2010. Management themselves, probably only of the magnitude of about two or three percent ownership of the company through um, the initial IPO and then through subsequent options that are granted in terms of performance related options for the performance of management, executive management in how we uh, manage the business. Okay, Nigel, what are plans for, for the next year? Next 12 yeah, months. plans for the next year, in some ways, they're, they're very firm what we need to do. The transition to cut and fill mining at Sasa is occupying a lot of our time. Obviously, at Sasa it is. Um, we intend to complete the construction of the backfill plant in the first half of the year and then move on to the construction of the dry stack tailings plant in the second half of the year and the landform associated with that dry stack tailing facility. So that's going to be a big focus to complete on that next year. Uh, and also next year, obviously, we'll be looking again, as we have been this year, for further opportunities to grow the business, given our strong balance sheet and position in the market. Okay, Nigel. Sounds great to me. Thank you for your time and thank for you this too. insight in your terrific company. Okay, thank really, you. Really, really like it and appreciate it. Okay, thanks very thanks. much for your time, too. Thank you. That was Nigel Robinson, the CEO of Central Asia Metals, live from the Mines and Money in London. I would say check out the company, do your own research, and bye-bye from London.